today on this video we're going to be discussing what is algorithmic trading and um, this is going to be the start of a new series that relates to tech and finance um, and we're going to be exploring a couple different concepts over the next coming weeks so you can find my videos on the amplify trading youtube channel every other week so let's get straight into what is algorithmic trading so the simplest way to understand what is algorithmic trading is to think of it as code and technical analysis that allows you to automate entering and exiting trades. These trades can then be entered and exited according to a predetermined set of parameters, um, which are your triggers essentially um, for entering that trade. These triggers or predetermined parameters could be based off of volatility levels, for example, or price movement. Then, once these predetermined criteria are hit, you'll be entered into a short or long position um, on your behalf by the trading algorithm. So that raises the question, why do people use algorithmic trading? Well, one of the first things you can think about is that this algorithm will essentially enter into positions when you're awake or asleep, and that can definitely be seen as a benefit. So that basically means you can let the algorithm do what it wants, no matter where you are or what you are doing. This then gives you increased market opportunities and maximizes your exposure to the market itself. Another benefit of algorithmic trading is that you're not plagued with one of the key issues that a lot of traders face these days. The hardest obstacle a trader is potentially faced with, uh, arguably, is human emotion. And using a algorithm deployed on a server can take this human emotion completely out of the equation, you know. An algorithm is not going to hesitate if a hit, uh, a target or predetermined level is hit. Um, it will always execute the trade on your behalf. I'm sure a lot of traders can agree about that feeling when you have a great trade running and you decide to book your profits early and then you look back at it the next day or you know 10 minutes later even and you see if you had just let it run that little extra mile it would have been a fantastic trade and this is something that the algorithm just is designed to overcome essentially and that's exactly what algorithmic trading aims to improve you're not having that human emotion get in the way of you extending your profits um, and you know cutting your losses early the algorithm at the end of the day is just a bunch of zeros and ones and you can tell it exactly what to do and it will stick exactly to what you've told it to do now that all sounds lovely and great you know for algorithmic trading and you, you i'm sure you're all sitting there right now thinking i want to get straight into algorithmic trading there are a few things that algorithms still struggle with today and one of these being optimization and overfitting the algorithm to the market this idea of overfitting or optimizing way too much for the market is one of the key issues that plagues a lot of um, algorithmic traders and it eventually even leads to some giving up on their strategies. This idea of overfitting or overanalyzing is when you're doing backtesting and you look back at five or ten years worth of data and you make tweaks to the algorithm, you know, adjusting the simple moving averages or exponential or whatever strategy it is you're employing to the point where in the past it may perform and excel exceedingly above um, expectations but when this is deployed on a live market you don't get the same results as you were from the past and that's simply because when you're back testing you have that bias of knowing what's coming while when you're trading live obviously you don't know the future um, and if anyone does know the future please do reach out to me um, i'm sure we could work on a great partnership but what happens here is that your algorithm then struggles to deal with the real market and the real market is something that you can't predict how, um, a lot of the time and it's something that can do anything it wants to you know it's not set in stone that price moved from a to b um, as it may be when you're looking at back testing and this is one of the things that i think a lot of algorithmic traders really do struggle to grasp the idea of um, creating an algorithm that excels in back testing but equally excels in the real market itself so this idea of overfitting is something that many algorithmic traders have faced and it's something that they spend hundreds and thousands of hours even trying to overcome. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of traders do at the end of it um, find that they're unsuccessful with their strategies and they have to go back to the thinking board um, and devise a new approach to the market itself. So you've heard the pros and cons, I guess, of algorithmic trading and, and the struggles that you can go through when trying to create a strategy. Um, and it really just does raise the question, is algorithmic trading for you? It really depends. I wouldn't recommend algorithmic trading to anyone who's new or not very familiar with coding. 
Alongside coding, you should also know how to work with network systems since you'll have to maintain and you know keep updating and optimizing this algorithmic training strategy to the point where you'll be working with a variety of different technologies and tools. As with anything in technology, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. You could have a server go off, your internet could cut out while you're in a position. And these are the things that you need to be able to maintain and monitor uh, and constantly look after and keep updating and you know maintaining this algorithmic trading um, robot or whatever it is. Because at the end of the day, it is a piece of software uh, and software needs updates and needs someone to look, look after it essentially. On top of that, you need to have a good understanding of how markets work uh, and trading strategies to find the best and optimal fit for the algorithm you're planning to create. It really does give you that edge over other algorithmic traders. Um, and it's definitely something I think a lot of computer science students or you know anyone with a coding background who might be trying to create an algorithmic strategy might be overlooking. Um, so that's definitely something to consider as well. So that was a very quick look at algorithmic trading. Creating an algorithmic trading bot is not all about the bot itself. I think there's a huge misconception in the industry and in general about the knowledge that's required to create a bot. It's not all about the strategy. It's about creating a platform, a package that's able to backtest, live trade, and anything else you really want to do with the bot in the future. It's about creating this unique environment for you to work in and be able to successfully develop and create any further algorithmic trading strategies you want to in the future and easily maintain and understand what is going on with your bot. So the first thing I believe you should focus on is the idea of creating a platform for receiving data from an exchange or data source of your choice and then using this data and storing it in a way that would allow you to backtest in the future. So this can be done in one of two ways. You can either use an existing API and create your own platform around it and then link to this API and fetch data. And this is when you can connect to different sources such as CQG, Binance, for example, for Bitcoin and other relating uh, cryptocurrencies. And you also have interactive brokers as well if you're interested in trading stocks. Those are just three to name, but there are plenty, hundreds of thousands of APIs actually available online. The second option is actually to use a pre-existing connection format. So this is when there's already platforms out there that are designed to do backtesting and connect to exchanges and generally create an environment for you to create the strategies a lot easier. Uh, and this is stuff like Backtrader and Zipline for Python. And these platforms I do think are great. Um, they're definitely easy ways to get started into trading. But the problem I've always found when using these platforms is it's not yours. If there's a feature that you want to add, you might struggle adding this feature in the future um, since the platform is obviously already created for you and works in a way that the original developers designed. So I always create my platforms from scratch whenever I am um, designing an algorithm at trading bot. So the second step is once you have this environment set up for backtesting um, and, and fetching data for you and storing it in a safe place for you to use in the future, you need to focus on researching and understanding the strategy that you want to implement. So when it comes to researching a strategy that works for you, this is the hard part, I guess. You're, you're on your own here. Uh, and any strategy that you find online, I, I genuinely find it doesn't work. You know, when a strategy is released to the public, it becomes ineffective. Um, and a lot of algorithm traders may copy this and as a result, it's less viable in the market um, that, that we might be currently experiencing. And likewise, as the market develops and changes over time, the strategy just stays the same. So it's, it might not be designed for the current market conditions uh, and it would just be a waste of time I found using other people's strategies. So, so do focus on creating your own one here. One of the key things here will be to create your own edge and outperform others who are algorithmic trading. Creating your own edge is a lot harder than it sounds. You know, you need to find something that works for you and gives you that advantage maybe over other traders. So this could be in the form of specific timeframes or multi time frame comparisons for trades, machine learning to understand the best positions to get in uh, and, and scale your position size dependent on the trade and parameters being fulfilled. You also have the option for artificial intelligence. So maybe you can make a a bot that relies on AI to scan tweets and news feeds to make a, I don't know, social score, for example. And from this social score, you, de you determine how likely are you to get long or short on this position. Um, and these are just some ideas I think you need to start thinking about is what is your edge in markets and what will get your algorithm outperforming others?
So the third step here is a simple sounding one, but it's, it's far from it. It's converting your strategy into pseudocode. And the reason we change our strategy to pseudocode is to understand, is our strategy viable for the platform we've created? And what pseudocode is, is essentially a way of writing instructions, you know, like a recipe or cooking book um, that you might have. So you can lay out if something happens, do this. Um, when X occurs, do this. It's just a way of writing in English the instructions that your algorithm needs to think through. It's kind of like writing your thought process down of why am I doing this? Uh, how do I get there? What do I want to do? How do I react? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what pseudocode is. And I think that this is the key step here. You need to be able to convert this strategy that you've developed uh, and, and believe in into a way that the computer can understand. One thing to know when you're writing pseudocode is don't believe that nothing is impossible. Anything that you can do manually or, or a task that you can complete can be automated eventually. And this is where you need that right skill set and, and the people potentially on your team to understand what is it that you want to take from reality into, into code or pseudocode in this example. You need to have that understanding of technology to know is what I'm asking for out of my scope or, or am I going to need to, to reduce what I'm asking for? Do I need to make, is it achievable? That, that's the question we're, we're trying to answer here. Is this feature that I'm implementing achievable? For me personally, adding an AI robot that scans tweets and determines the social score is currently unachievable. I think that's beyond my skill set, and that's definitely something that I think a few traders or, or anyone who's new to algorithm trading might agree with. It's, it's something that would be a nice feature to add in the future, but for now I'm going to focus on other things. So yeah, I, I'm not saying this is the easy part of um, the process. You're essentially taking human reactions, thoughts, uh, and the processes that we think in our head naturally and, and maybe on the fly and writing them down in a way that a computer could potentially understand. You're basically mapping the intentions you have in your mind to the paper. And that's why pseudocode writing, I think, is very important. Know what you want before you start coding. It is always making life a lot easier for me anyways. So step number four, once you have this platform and this idea, you now need to bring it all together. You need to bring that pseudocode back together with your platform to create the strategy and implement it. This implementation and testing process, I guess, is the one that takes ages. This is why algorithmic trading might take a few years or, or you know, however long to actually develop a fully working system. It's not as easy as it may seem. And after these steps, you can finally now start making strategies and testing them out. This loop, I guess, of implementing strategies, developing new strategies, etc., etc., is the one I think a lot of traders get stuck in. Some get out and some never do, unfortunately, get out of this loop. And when you get to this stage, you need to be able to understand how do you benchmark what you're doing. You need to be able to take these results or outcomes that you achieve and evaluate them in a sense that you can actually see, is this algorithmic training strategy I've created viable for me? Is it, is it going to provide a future or whatever it is you're trying to achieve once we release it on the live markets or, or a paper trading account, for example? You need to compare this strategy to different models. And these models can be some things such as buying and holding um, the assets that you're looking at, all the way to comparing the assets against the S&P or any other benchmark indice that you would potentially invest the same amount of cash in. And if you're outperforming the S&P or generally buying and holding the stock or assets that you're trading, then you're clearly doing a good job in this algorithm. Because the last thing you want to do is create an algorithm that has the potential for way more risk, I guess. Um, a lot more work is needed in the maintenance and looking after the algorithm compared to just buying and holding some assets. And you don't really want it to be underperforming um, the ability, I guess, of just buying and holding these assets. What's the point of returning, say, 5% from the algorithm when buying and holding something can return 7 It's kind of a waste of time and energy, you know. It's a lot easier just to, to buy the asset itself. Finally, after all of this, you have step number five, which is connecting your algorithmic trading bot or platform to a paper trading or live account. Uh, and if you've created this platform in a way where, you know, steps are taken and then finally there's a result, it either goes into a position or not, you're going to have the ability to then simply replace this temporary area where it tells you that it's gone into a position with a live trading account. Use the APIs that I mentioned earlier to 
essentially place the orders for you onto the exchange. And that's all. Those are the five steps, I think, that briefly cover how to create an algorithm trading bot. The process sounds so short and simple when I, when I lay it out like this, but it's actually a process that could span over two or three years, I've seen, um, with some algorithmic traders. If your strategy performs perfectly fine on a paper trading account, for example, you might then move it onto a live trading account. <laughs> and this is when there are even more issues that occur. You have to then take into consideration slippage, commissions, and order execution times. A strategy that works on paper trading when you don't have to take into consideration all these things might actually fail on the live market because the live market obviously behaves a lot differently. You have to worry about getting filled and not filled. Um, and these are some things that I guess you have to also consider during this whole process. But let's just say all of that works. You've now finally created an algorithmic trading robot and it does everything that you've initially wanted it to do. This is when you can start thinking of those other improvements I was talking about. Machine learning, for example, to increase and decrease the scale, the sizes of your positions. I want to enter a position here using 10 contracts. And then the machine learning could potentially learn over time that actually a trade like this is actually very successful. I want to actually enter with 20 positions. And, and doing this simple machine learning process, I guess, um, compared to other machine learning processes is that you can actually increase your profits without actually changing much of your strategy. Likewise, you can implement a AI that I already mentioned about a social score, potentially an index indicator or whatever it is that looks at the, you know, tweets or news feeds to determine on the scale, how likely is sentiment towards the, to, to the long side, are we bullish or bearish? Um, and that, and that's what we can potentially develop here with this algorithm training bot. There are countless opportunities and ideas that haven't even been thought of yet for how to improve your algorithm training bot. And, and that's the great thing about this is once you've created this platform and you're able to implement all of these strategies on a basic level, you can then begin expanding over time with these additional features that can help increase your success rate and likewise increase the profits that you're turning over. So thank you everyone for watching this video all about algorithmic trading and, and a quick overview of how the algorithmic trading process might work for someone who doesn't understand, is it as simple as just writing up a strategy and releasing it straight on the market? If you're interested in algorithmic trading and, and learn more and understanding more about the process um, from us here at Amplify, we do offer an algorithmic trading simulation. This algorithmic trading simulation takes over, place over a day and it's a session where in the morning you'll learn the basics of Python. You'll be able to, to code some Python and, and get used to the idea of debugging and, and things like this. And in the afternoon, we'll take you on a run through our simulation platform. And in this platform, you essentially will be given some instructions, some steps. You'll go from importing data like we discussed today in step one, all the way to the point of benchmarking against the S&P or against your assets that you've bought, like buy and holding um, the strategy. So if you're interested in this idea of algorithmic trading and getting to know more about it and potentially taking part in the simulation. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at algorithmic versus discretionary trading. What are the pros and cons of each? And is there a reason someone might choose to be a algorithmic or discretionary trader? Is one better than the other? These are the kind of questions we'll be answering in today's video. So as usual guys, please do like and subscribe down below to stay up to date with the latest content from Amplify Trading relating to markets every day, every morning, straight into your inbox. So do hit that bell button to stay up to date. Algorithmic trading is all about traders who use algorithms, machine learning, AI, or anything like that to make trading decisions for them. They have systems in place that usually have a fixed set of rules, or in the case of machine learning or AI, adapt to market conditions to decide what is the best trade or plan for the day. These rules will then allow the system to trigger a short or long position. So that basically means to either buy or sell. These algorithmic trading systems will then also automatically exit the position normally, either at a take profit or a target price determined by the algorithm. In the scenario of algorithmic trading, what usually happens is the trader isn't making decisions. Instead, the trader is actually monitoring the system to make sure there are no malfunctions or unexpected trades being placed. Discretionary trading, on the other hand, is all about a trader who makes decisions live in markets real time. This trader may have a set of rules that they've determined themselves, a strategy if you must, and they usually stick to this or at least try to. The set of rules that they stick to are then used to make the decisions of if they should enter long or short. And unlike algorithmic trading, these rules might be a bit loose, so they often are 
change to fit market conditions, depending on if we're having a volatile or non-volatile day. Discretionary trading at the end of it is usually based around signals. So this can be from your technical analysis or a signal maybe in the form of any fundamental news that comes out, like a drawdown or a buildup in weekly oil inventories. So let's look at the most obvious downside with discretionary traders. You know, the big one that everyone always thinks of the first time they compare discretionary versus algorithmic trading. Emotions. With emotions, as you can see in the last like 30 seconds or whatever, I've gone all over the place with my emotions as well. And that can happen in trading easily. You can easily go from being a calm, logical person to being completely irrational and doing things that you wouldn't normally do. The impact of human emotions is something everyone always deals with. So it's not like it's a unique case for some discretionary traders. Human emotions is a part of life and it's something that every trader must overcome to become a successful one usually. As with anything, human emotions can actually lead to the trader becoming irrational uh, and prone to more errors. This is obviously not an issue in algorithmic trading where a computer system that usually takes in strict fixed rules um, doesn't have to deal with these emotions. They usually either take the signal, go long or short, and they aren't phased by anything if that happens in the news or anything like that. This mathematical model that might be adapted by algorithmic traders also allows for the system to avoid any emotions such as fear or greed. And this means that when there is a take profit at say 20 or 30 ticks, well that take profit will always be hit at 20 or 30 ticks. This algorithmic trading bot may not, unlike a human trader, get greedy and move this um, take profit higher and higher to the point where markets never reach there. And, and next thing you know, they're not making as much as they potentially could have. Likewise, the opposite happens. A algorithm trading bot might have a target at 50, 50 ticks or something like that. And the human trader actually feels fear and takes out this position a lot earlier. So building on that, discretionary traders may have the potential to close positions earlier. They may let their losers run longer than they need to and let the winners actually run really short. As a human making many decisions in a few seconds, or even a couple minutes, or even an hour, these decisions that are based around your, your trades can be a lot of overwhelming thoughts and eventually can lead to a lot of confusion. As a result, algorithmic trading actually stands out here incredibly well. You know, there is defined risk and you know what you're getting into when you get into a trade. The algorithm takes all the decision making away from the trader. Okay, so I said a lot of things hating on discretionary traders, um, but it's not all doom and gloom for discretionary traders. There's actually a lot of benefits. One of the key benefits discretionary traders have over algorithmic traders is that they're able to adapt to market conditions a lot faster and a lot quicker than an algorithm can. You know, if Donald Trump tweets something, the algorithm might not even be looking at that at all, while a discretionary trader may hear this in the news or through a squawk. And the next thing you know, they'll be able to adapt their trading style to whatever's happening in markets instantly. And you know, that all sounds good in theory. And the best thing is this actually happened this year. During March, we found that a lot of quant hedge funds actually performed a lot worse than their traditional counterparts. According to a Nomura strategist, actually what we found was 17% of all quant funds actually outperformed the benchmarks compared to traditional funds. With the fundamental driven funds or traditional funds, as you want to call them, we actually found that more than half of all of those actually outperformed the benchmark during the sell off in March. So algorithmic versus discretionary trading. There's a lot of benefits and a lot of cons. One system might not work all, all the time. And there's a reason that we still have discretionary traders to this day, even though algorithms might seem like the future. I feel personally, there's always going to be a space for discretionary traders. There are a few other things to look at as well with discretionary versus algorithmic trading. Algorithmic traders have a lot higher skill set required, I guess, in terms of developing algorithms, understanding programming, while also understanding how markets work. I don't think that an algorithmic trader can create the correct algorithm to trade in markets without a good understanding of how financial markets operate. And this can only be really achieved from being a discretionary trader first understanding firsthand in real time what is it like to trade what kind of thoughts and decisions might a, a discretionary trader actually have and then these can be later applied to algorithmic trading while on the other hand a discretionary trader actually might be someone who is very 
in tone with their emotions and actually able to control them very well. Being able to understand why you're thinking in a, in a certain way and being able to reflect these changes in your trading without going out of control and not really becoming irrational is something that might make a discretionary trader actually outperform and excel. And these are the skills that you might be looking at when deciding, am I an algorithmic or discretionary trader? You know, do you have all the skills required to, and the time to, to develop an algorithmic trading system? Or are you someone who's actually very at tone with their emotions or the decision-making process in having quick reactions to what markets are doing um, to the point where you can also be a discretionary trader? So just to, to fire through the pros and cons again for algorithmic trading. Well, algorithmic trading pros, I guess, there is no emotional impact um, as the machine listens to a set um, fixed rules. There is also fixed position and risk management. The machine is told to do X number of trades or go X number of ticks before exiting a position, while a human trader might not necessarily stick to these rules exactly. Some of the cons with algorithmic trading, well, obviously you need a very high skill set. You need to be able to understand financial markets, be able to code, and most of all, you need to have the high maintenance availability. You can't just let this algorithmic trading bot go into the wild and just trade without you not looking at it. You need to be able to there, be there to monitor it and fix any faults that may occur during a trading session. Algorithmic trading is also slow to adapt to black swan events. So like March in our example, you know, these algorithms and systems aren't designed for that and they cannot predict the future. And as a result of being unable to adapt very fast, they actually lag behind the discretionary counterpart. So what are the benefits of a discretionary trader? Well, like I said, they're able to adapt to these black swan events. You know, March was a time where, in my opinion, algorithms went out the window. And it was much more down to how were people feeling, what was the current sentiment in the market. And as a result there, you would have excelled rather than an algorithm that would have been looking at just numbers. On top of that, a discretional trader is actually able to adapt to market conditions live and real time. And that gives you that edge of knowing and being able to respond to events happening in real time that an algorithm might not be able to do. Well, a basic one anyways. What are the cons of a discretional trader? Well, the biggest outlying one is the emotional impact of trading, the irrationality and the ability to potentially go off the rails, I guess, um, when a trade goes sideways. There is obviously also the potential poor trade management. So this includes entries, getting out of positions, letting your losers run and your winners cutting them short. These are all the things that could potentially prohibit and make a discretional trader perform worse than the algorithmic counterpart. So guys, thank you for watching this video. I know it was a very quick one, but we were just looking at algorithmic versus discretionary trading.